Oh, wow, man. They made a third Cars movie? Good golly, man. That's incredible. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, Lightning McQueen for the third time. Wow, man. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Hey there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I am here to review Cars 3. So, Cars 3 is obviously the third installment in the Cars trilogy, and the film is now being written and directed by Brian Fee, John Lasseter, who was in charge of the first two Cars movies. He is not writing or directing this one. And the film has the voice talents of Owen Wilson, Cristela Alonzo, Chris Cooper, Nathan Fillion, Larry the Cable Guy, Army Hammer, Tony Shalhoub, Bonnie Hunt, many incredible voice talents here. So Cars 3 is about when Lightning McQueen has to come to terms that he is becoming an old car, especially ever since Jackson Storm, this high-tech car, now being faster than Lightning McQueen now, Lightning McQueen, even though he has to come to terms that he's not as fast as he used to be, he could still use his wits to hopefully be Jackson Storm. And in order for that to happen, Lightning McQueen has to do a lot of preparing. I personally think these movies are underappreciated Pixar movies. I love the first Cars. I think the first Cars had a genuinely great story. I thought the humor was handled very well. I love the characters. I do think it had that emotional core that we're used to seeing in Pixar movies. I think it's a genuinely great movie. Not just a great anime movie, not just a great Pixar movie, I do think the first Cars is genuinely a great movie. And Cars 2, obviously not as good as the first Cars, but I did have fun with it. Now, technically speaking, I would say Cars 2 is the weakest Pixar film. That being said, that's not really saying much because I still had fun with Cars 2. I think it's a good, fun, silly spy movie. I do like the fact that we got a spy movie set around the Cars world. But Cars 3, I was really excited for because this one really looked like it was gonna go back to the roots of the first film. And as much as I did like Cars 2, it definitely didn't have the roots of the first film. Not in a bad way, though. I honestly think Cars 3 is a very solid movie. Now look, it's not one of the best movies in Pixar's filmography. I'll say that straight off the bat. It's not one of the best Pixar movies out there. But as a movie, it's very well done. I still found myself incredibly engaged, honestly, with Cars 3. I did like how they explored Lightning McQueen and the fact that he's an older car and he has to get used to the fact that he's not really as fast as he used to be. How the movie handled that whole entire storyline, I honestly think, did think was very interesting. And any time we would cut to the racing sequences of this film, I honestly found myself really engaged. And honestly, when Lightning McQueen breaks and flips, like... I thought that was very intense. That was a very intense moment and you really felt bad for Lightning. You're really rooting for Lightning because you want him to just get better. You want him to go ahead and defeat Jackson Storm. And Lightning McQueen has changed a lot since the first film. In the first film, he was such a cocky and careless car. He didn't really care about anyone but himself. And obviously in cars, when he goes to Radiator Springs, that's when he sees that there's more to life than just racing, and he's changed from there. And in this film, he continues to progress as a character. And because of that, I really liked Lightning. You know, I liked him, honestly, just as much as I did in the first film. And even in Cars 2, despite the fact he's not in Cars 2 that much. Lightning McQueen has progressed a lot as a character, and I really appreciated what the filmmakers have done with this character. And Owen Wilson still honestly does a very great job job voicing Lightning McQueen. Wow, despite the fact it's Owen Wilson using his regular voice, with these movies, I don't see Owen Wilson in a, vo in a recording studio. I actually see Lightning McQueen, and that's credit Owen Wilson. He still really brings it with this character. And the rest of the other voice actors, like from Larry the Cable Guy voicing Mater, I thought he was really great. Mater is not in this film that much, by the way. He only has like maybe 10 to 15 minutes of screen time, and I think Pixar has listened 
listen to people's criticisms with him and Cars 2. That's why he's not in this film that much. They did use him in small doses, but when Mater was here, I honestly loved Mater. I thought he was still such an enjoyable character, and he did have me laughing a few times. Bonnie Hunt as Sally is still really good here, and I did really like that we got a little bit more of those moments between her and Lightning McQueen. Um, not a whole lot, unfortunately. It's not like the first film where we focus a lot of the movie between her and Lightning. But for the smaller moments when we do have scenes between Lightning and her, I did find those scenes to be incredibly well executed. All the other voice actors, you know, like um, Army Hammer, he did pretty good as a... Um, Jackson Storm, his voice did fit for the character. Nathan Fillion's voice for this rich car whose name I forgot. He was really good and everyone else, like the cast is too big to name, but everyone else honestly did a very great job, including Chris Cooper as this character Smokey, who was actually one of Doc Hudson's friends. Speaking of Doc Hudson, because of Paul Newman passing away unfortunately after the first Cars, they used some archive recordings of Paul Newman and they actually used that for Cars 3. So you know, even though Paul Newman's no longer around it was nice to see Doc Hudson a little more it was nice to hear a few new lines from Doc Hudson and honestly it was wonderful they paid a beautiful tribute to the character of Doc Hudson because of how much this character means to Lightning McQueen and everyone else and not only is it a wonderful tribute to Doc Hudson I think in general it's just a wonderful tribute to the actor Paul Newman because Paul Newman is one of the best actors out there and the fact that he's no longer around honestly it does make me sad thinking about it so I did really like how this movie paid tribute to Doc Hudson and just Paul Newman in general I thought it was very beautiful every single scene that was focused on the character of Doc Hudson and what he has done and how much he's impacted Lightning's life it, it was honestly heartwarming and I almost got a little teary-eyed to be honest I almost got teary-eyed whenever we got to the Doc Hudson moments in Cars 3 and I do think Cars 3 brings back that a little bit more of that emotional core from Cars because you know Cars 2 as much as I do like Cars 2 as much as I do think it's fun it's not emotional it doesn't try to be deep Cars 3 tries to be a little more deeper with its storyline maybe not as deep as you know other Pixar movies but as far as where it's taking its story it does try to be a little more deeper and I do appreciate what Brian Fee and the rest of the creative team try to do with this film. It was heartwarming. It's sometimes funny. There are some moments where I did find myself laughing. I did care about the characters. I thought the writing for these characters were really nice. And of course, I have to bring up Cristilla Alonso as Cruz Ramirez. Now, Cruz Ramirez, I was annoyed by this character when she's introduced. But then when you learn more about this character, when you learn more about her goals, in life. I honestly found myself so interested in this character and I really liked what she was doing for the storyline. She she served a lot of purpose for a storyline. She wasn't a character that was thrown into the story. Her She actually served a purpose and I really liked how she was helping Lightning but in other aspects Lightning is really helping her. I know this movie is viewed as a generic kids movie and I don't think it's always a kitty movie. I think it does go into sometimes some more mature places. Like it's not like super super heavy or anything but there are moments where Cars 3 I didn't think go into full kitty territory. Yes and some aspects they do but other moments like when Lightning and Cruz Ramirez they have like serious talks or like when Lightning and Cruz Ramirez they meet up with Doc Hudson's friends. The movie wasn't really going full kitty there. It was trying to take itself more seriously and I appreciated that. The score is very beautiful too. Honestly with these Pixar movies the score always sounds so fantastic. It always fits the overall atmosphere for these movies and of course I have to comment on the animation. It is expected in every single Pixar film for there to be great animation and that's no different here. Cars 3 has incredible animation and might actually have the best animation in the entire Cars franchise. And that's not really saying much because Cars had 
great animation. And then Cars 2, you could tell the animation really improved there. And it's expected because these Pixar movies are like so expensive. These are normally like over $200 million. So if your movie is going to be two, over $200 million, yeah, you, you have to have great animation because with that amount of money, there should be no reason for the animation to look cheap. And thankfully, it does not look cheap at all here in Cars 3. The locations, the details, the cars. I think there's a little bit more details on the cars themselves than ever before. Just everything about this world. The animation is so colorful and bright and so real. It's honestly just truly impressive. And the fact that Pixar continues to be consistent with amazing animation is truly something to commend them for. And for my final positive with Cars 3, I will say the third act was something I liked, but didn't like at the same time. It's kind of weird, and I have to be careful without spoiling anything, but here's what I'll say about the third act. I do like it because it was a nice direction for them to take the film. Although, yes, I was able to predict where they were going to go with the third act. I did think it was nice. I could see why they went that direction. I mean, credit to Ryan Fee and the creative team. They actually went really ballsy. Like, they t it took a lot of balls for them to go in that direction with the third act, even if it is predictable. But that didn't really bother me because I thought it was nice. And I did really like that. But of course, why I also didn't like it at the same time, I'll say that into my negatives. And now let's talk about my cons with Cars 3, because as much as I did really enjoy Cars 3, and I really enjoyed it, yes, there are definitely problems for sure with this film. And I will say this, the humor does not land a lot of the times. Now, I will say Cars 3 is definitely better in terms of humor than Cars 2, because Cars 2, you know, as much as I had fun with that film, I didn't really recall really laughing watching Cars 2. At least with Cars 3, I would get a laugh once in a while. But most of the time when they attempt at humor, it didn't really work for me. It wasn't anything horrible. It wasn't like anything that made me go, oh my god, that was awful. It wasn't anything like that, thankfully. But just their attempt at humor for the most part. Unfortunately, it was a missed opportunity as far as that goes. But that's forgivable because I found myself so engaged with the storyline that the humor honestly didn't matter much to me, but it definitely could have been better for sure. Also, Army Hammer's Jackson Storm, even though he was really good voice actor, Acting wise with the character, I did feel like Jackson Storm was just your typical generic villain. He doesn't even appear a lot, so yeah, I thought they were gonna cool, go in cool directions with Jackson Storm for what I saw in the trailers. I thought they were maybe gonna keep some secrets about him, and nope, they don't really do much with the character. He only appears like very, very once in a while, and when he does show up, he's like, okay, yeah, he's there, and he's unfortunately very forgettable. And speaking of forgettable, Nathan Fillion as this rich car, didn't really see anything special about him either. Some of the side characters, like some of the new, new characters, not smoke and uh, his friends those characters I remember but all the other new characters that you see Lightning McQueen and Cruz Ramirez bump into they're not exactly very memorable characters like when I really think about this film I really forget about most of the new characters that you see them bump into when they're going on this journey also pacing wise there are times where yes this film did drag I would say for me the moment the moment that did drag a little too much for me was once Lightning McQueen meets Cruz Ramirez for the first time and he goes into this high-tech place where He's learning to drive better, like he's going into these machines. I did think that portion of the movie dragged a little too much, and I think they could have trimmed that scene specifically for sure. And for my final problem with Cars 3, this goes into the final act. I like the final act, but don't like it. It's really weird. I'm 50-50. I like the final act because it did do something very nice for the film. It did go in a very nice direction. It did serve something very nice for the overall storyline. And it was a nice risky move on Pixar's part. But then I also didn't really like it 
because I thought it went against what this entire movie was building up to. And it's hard to talk about without spoiling anything, but if you guys have seen this movie, I think you know where I'm coming from when I say that. Like this movie builds up and builds up, and then when you get to the climax, it did feel like a cop-out. It, it honestly kind of did. And yeah, of course, this film is not anything like new. You've seen this kind of story before. That's not really a problem with me, however. That didn't really bug me. But, you know, I just figured I'd just address that. Overall, Cars 3, I think, is a solid entry into Pixar's filmography. I really enjoyed this movie. The animation still looks stellar. The voice acting is great. I really love the heartwarming moments. I thought the tribute to Doc Hudson and Paul Newman in general was really beautiful. Cars 3 is definitely the sequel I wanted and like I said it's not one of Pixar's best films and I don't think every Pixar movie has to be gold personally but this was just a really solid really fun really entertaining animated film. I'm gonna give Cars 3 three out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Cars 3 and how did it compare to 2 and 1. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!